Good afternoon. It is hard to believe that one year ago, I started at the EC, and on the first, second day on the job, I walked into BMI for my first ever Entrepreneur Center event, and that was the Project Music Showcase. So here we are almost a year later, and my, what a year it has been. This has been a year that has changed in so many ways, and especially the music industry. We feel for the challenges the pandemic has caused. We've you rally, support each other in solutions. We're inspired by how much support you all have for one another as a community. And we are committed to support your community and the industry through Project Music to identify and work with the entrepreneurs fading in your space. Tonight, we are thrilled to showcase 11 different entrepreneurs who are doing just that. As a reminder, the Nashville Entrepreneur Center is a nonprofit, 501c3, founded in 2010 as an initiative of the Nashville business community with the vision to become the best place in America for entrepreneurship. Music is a part of Nashville's fiber and a core business in the city's booming economy. Now in its sixth year, Project Music brings together music, technology, and business leaders to accelerate the development of industry-changing innovative companies. Music minded entrepreneurs are able to leverage the EC's extensive industry connections to foster innovative innovation, nurture growth, and drive the future of the music industry. Project Music would not be possible without the support of our partners, advisors, entrepreneurs, and industry experts, many of which have been with us since day like co-founding partners, Pinnacle Bank, Launch Tennessee, Joe Galante, and Belmont University's Mike Curb College of Music Business. Since 2015, Project Music has graduated 53 companies with an 8% alive rate. They have raised over 27 million in capital, Thank you so much to this community for being here and supporting Music Founders. And now I'm going to pass it back over to Jeremy. I have to put on my mask first. <laughs> Thank you, Jane, and welcome once again. I'll take my mask off now, now that we're in a safe distance apart. Uh, my name is Jeremy Rayleigh. Um, most of you guys know me in different areas, but I'm the director of programs at the Nashville Entrepreneur Center, meaning I get to work with all the amazing startups that you're going to see tonight. I get to work with the advisors and I get to work with just a really awesome community. And I'm uh, just really grateful to be a part of it. Um, yeah, kind of like what Jane said, we've had so many amazing partners um, over the years, including ones that have been there from the beginning. Um, and so it's one of them uh, we actually want to just really highlight um, ahead of time, and, and I'm going to bring uh, her on stage right now. And it is uh, Van Tucker of Launch Tennessee. Van, are you with us? I'm here, Jeremy. Thanks. I'm so excited to be here today. Of course. Yeah, the stage is yours for just a little bit to tell them a little bit about Launch Tennessee. Thanks. Well, um, Launch Tennessee is a proud partner of the Nashville Entrepreneur Center and the Project Music Showcase. We empower our state's entrepreneur ecosystem, working with entrepreneur centers across the state for statewide industry mentor networks and Bunker Labs, which helps power veteran entrepreneurs. We facilitate connection among entrepreneurs, innovators, capital providers, the private sector, institutions, and government to ensure that resources are available all over our state for entrepreneurs. We're particularly um, proud of the 10-year history of the Nashville Entrepreneur Center and of the Project uh, Music Showcase. Innovation has never been more important in the music and entertainment industry, and it's exciting to see um, today, all of the ideas um, for how we can innovate in the music and entertainment space. Please check us out at launchtn.org. 
Uh, and Jeremy, I'll hand it back to you to keep the ball rolling. Thank you. Amazing. Yes, we love Launch Tennessee. Thank you so much for being here tonight. And um, yeah, thank you, Van. So uh, the next the next individual that I want to introduce you guys to is someone that you probably don't need an introduction for, but um, it's an individual that's been a key part of the program um, since day one. He takes a lot of his own personal time to uh, work directly with the entrepreneurs, but also I get to work with him in developing the program and making sure that we have the right resources. Um, he is the entrepreneur in residence for the program, and he's an entrepreneur himself. Please welcome Stephen Lynn. Hello, Stephen. Hello. Thank you, Jeremy, and thank all of you for being here to celebrate our sixth year of Project Music, uh, an incredible cohort this year. This is my fourth year as EIR, and it's been program grow, and this year it became quite hectic at first to watch the, pro the program change. Right as Jeremy and the team and everyone was starting to uh, prepare to have everybody come to Nashville for the kickoff, of course, COVID happened. So it very quickly became a virtual program. And instead of having the teams in Nashville for two or three days, six or seven times during the year, it became a uh, every Wednesday event. We have virtual sessions every Wednesday, a happy hour afterwards to uh, try to build community so everyone can get to know each other. And it was very different. But it also had some silver linings that allowed us to bring in some experts and speakers that are in other cities, other places, people that would not have been a part of the program otherwise, which is something that I think will probably keep in the program even once it's legal for all of us to be in the same room again. Um, we also you know, like to put music into Project Music every year. And this year we did that a lot. We had a number of artists not only perform, but also participate in those Wednesday panels. But today we wanted to do something a little bit differently. We wanted to have an artist that was directly connected to one of the startups in the program. So Bella Musser is a Colorado-based artist who, when she began her journey a couple of years ago, used startup Itty Ditty to find her producer and to record her song, One Kiss More. So to kick us off, please welcome Bella Musser. Amazing. Bella is making her way to the virtual stage right now. And uh, yeah, like, like Steven, Steven's kind of had the, the quote throughout the year uh, to put music back into Project Music. And it's, uh, we're really glad that we're able to feature an artist that's actually been, uh, you know, a part of one of the startups. Um, Bella said Wi-Fi issues, but I think she's making her way through. This is just... It's the equivalent of maybe tripping as you're going up onto stage and needs to go and, or if she broke a guitar string, these things are going to happen in the virtual world. There she I is. Made it. <laughs> you made it. Hello. Welcome, Bella. Thank you. Thank you so much for having being me. here. Yeah, of course. Uh, I'm going to take uh, Stephen and myself off stage and I'm going to actually take down the slide so you will have the, the full um, captive audience. So um, thank you so much for being here and excited to hear your tune. Yeah, of course. All right. Um, cool. So hello, everyone. My name is Bella Musser. Uh, I am from Denver, Colorado, Colorado, where um, Itty Diddy was founded. And I um, first touched base with Emily in 2018 to record a song called One Kiss More. Um, it was the first single I had ever released, first acoustic single, really going back to my singer-songwriter roots. And um, I was lucky enough to partner with Jonah Brockman, who produced the song, who is also the co-founder of Itty Diddy. So right off the bat, I got to know Emily and Jonah, and they were just wonderful to work with. I'm really excited for them to tell you all about Itty Diddy and the awesome things it does for artists and producers this song wouldn't be what it is without it um, but it's called one kiss more and i hope you enjoy Yeah. 
person clapping which is me but i represent <laughs> a class of of hundreds so well done um thank you so much for being here with us yeah. and for supporting startups like uh, itty ditty of course thanks you guys for, for having me <laughs> awesome well also i had to say something about the cat in the background <laughs> everyone I think it's like yeah, there's know, it's two just, of them they're always <laughs> Oh wow! I didn't notice it was a double cat. Yeah, they were. Uh, they're, they definitely represent where I want to be in in the year of twenty. A pure presence in the background. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Bella. I um, hope you can stick around and uh, chat with some of the teams. And so I'm going to go ahead and take you off stage. Um, and we're about to get started, everyone, with the pitches. This is what you came for. Before we get going, I did want to share um, a few little notes about the platform that we're using tonight. So clearly, this is a new venture for us in terms of um, we're you know we're we're using this cool platform that allows you to do quite a few different things. And I wanted to make sure you guys are up to speed with it. Um, so you entered into the reception area, and this is where you're going to have some information about each of the teams about some of the speakers um, and really just kind of having all the information in one place. The stage, that's where you're at right now. Um, and the thing I'll point out in just a second is important is the chat, um, but you're in the right place. Um, as you can see to the left, whatever is actually happening for that time is, is, uh, is where you should be. And so you're in the right spot. Um, the main thing that I want to point out is afterwards you will go to the Startup Village in order to connect with the teams. It's pretty self-explanatory once you get there that the, the Startup Village will be active until that time. So please don't, um, don't leave until we'll showcase it. But that's where you'll be able to select different teams, go in meet with the founder, request information, the whole nine yards. The last thing is that there are multiple chats. The one that you should be most tuned into most of the time is the event chat. Um, and so it looks like a lot of you guys are already active in there, but that's where we want to see uh, shout outs, congratulations, questions, um, comments, ideas. That's where everything's going to take place. And so say on the event chat, once you go to the startup village, there's a booth chat for any of the booths that are going on, whichever one that you're in. And then finally, there is a direct message tab that if you see someone interesting on the panel or excuse me, on the chat that you wanted to start a private uh, individual conversation with, Direct messages is how you'll do that. So a lot of different ways to connect, but all in all, you're in the right place right now. And that's all that matters. Um, so the, the cool thing that we tried this year that we wanted to do this year is instead of having all the partners kind of at the top, um, we actually are going to have them introduce each of our teams. So with that, um, it's time to get started. Each team will pitch for four minutes. Um, we'll, we'll kind of go uh, one right after the other. There'll be a short intermission in the middle um, with an announcement from our very own Heather McBee. But then from there, we'll get right into the startup village. Um, and so for this first one, um, it's my pleasure to introduce you to Gil Beverly of the Tennessee Titans to welcome our first pitch. Hello, I'm Gil Beverly, Chief Marketing Rep of the Tennessee Titans. 
The Titans recently announced our partnership with the EC to support local Nashville businesses through a unique competition, the Pitch for Good Tennessee Tough. At the Titans, we experience a lot of the same challenges as the music industry, especially as it pertains to fan engagement and delivering powerful live experiences. With that in mind, I'm very excited today to join the Project Music Showcase to see how you guys are tackling some of these issues and opportunities. To kick things off, I'd like to introduce the first presenter of the day, Doug DeAngelis from Black Sleeve Media. Thank you, and best of luck to all the contestants. Here we go. Hi, I'm Doug DeAngelis from Black Sleeve Media based in Nashville, Tennessee. We live in a technology-driven era where our real-life activities and interests, like sports and music and television, are often disconnected from our virtual life activities and interests, like social media, gaming, and YouTube. Because of this, fan engagement, marketing, and monetization of real life is also disconnected from virtual life. Our goal at Blacksleeve was to create one complete mobile entertainment platform where real life events and activities connect directly to virtual life events and activities and virtual back to real life for one complete fan engagement experience. So how do we do that? At Black Sleeve, we partner together to gamify your brand into a feature rich virtual world of custom themed mobile games, contests, challenges, and an array of social media activities. Then, we harness that fan engagement to drive sales, marketing, sponsorship, as well as new revenue generated by in-app purchases and subscriptions. And we do that all within one platform. Let's take a look at the features. Sleeve Media launched in March of 2020 in partnership with Live Nation for two of its summer music festivals, Heartland Stampede and Country Jam. Unfortunately, when COVID-19 hit, we were forced to make a pivot. So our next release coming out this December is for the Emmy Award winning 2020 Netflix series, Chill. We're a scalable business model with multiple revenue streams and a wide range of potential clients, including sports franchises, film and television franchises, concert tours, and music festivals. A conservative financial model shows that with just 500,000 free users and 50,000 paid users, Black Sleeve Media's projected annual per app revenue is over $3.5 million. That would also equal over $3.5 million in net revenue for our brand partner. We are a self-contained leadership and technology team who are already at market with no investment capital or debt. In fact, everything you've seen in this presentation today is the work of just this small team of four. We're looking for brand partners to use the platform as well as investment capital in order to scale and hire more employees. So when you think of Black Sleeve Media, we are one mobile entertainment platform where virtual meets reality. Thank you so much, and I look forward to meeting you. Awesome. On to the next pitch, and here to introduce Roy Scott. 
is Kelsey of the Bonnaroo Works Fund. The Bonnaroo Works Fund, we champion those changing the world through social impact, human development, and community inspiration. So it has been a natural fit for us to partner with Project Music as it leads the charge for innovation. Education and arts are an important focus area for us. So we always love seeing companies that bring the two together like Roy Scott does with Healthy Hip Hop. Please welcome Roy. My name is Roy Scott, founder and CEO of Healthy Hip Hop, an online platform powered by the arts and social interaction. Infusing hip hop culture and cutting edge technology to improve learning environments. We are the Sesame Street of the 21st century. See this guy in the middle? That was me once upon a time. What was I thinking? As a kid, I was heavily influenced by hip hop and I didn't understand the importance of education. So after graduating high school, I decided instead of going to college that I was going to be a rapper. Maybe not the best decision. Yet on that journey, I had my wake up call when I was picking up my son Justice from school. And I noticed him repeating my music word for word. These lyrics promoted drugs, violence, and degraded women. That was my light bulb moment. If I wanted to continue pursuing this dream, and more importantly, be the man and father I need to be for justice in my family, I'm gonna have to completely change my direction and my message. And this is when healthy hip hop was born. Taking my talents as a writer, producer, and performer, then using that to uplift children. Organically growing the brand, we've done more than 1,500 live events, reaching hundreds of thousands of children. Tested the market, proven the concept, and evolved to a tech company so we can meet our growing demand. Creating a digital world of music, mindfulness, and motivation led by PJ Panda and the Healthy Hip Hop Crew. Everybody's been impacted by this global health pandemic, and right now, most of our kids are being homeschooled. This is a real problem for teachers and parents. The Healthy Hip Hop SaaS platform allows educators to live stream our music and video content to improve focus and engagement and encourage active learning. Our mobile application gives parents an easy to use tool to keep their kids engaged and empowers them to create custom videos, just like TikTok, but in a much safer environment for children. I've experienced this firsthand, having a daughter who loves TikTok, yet I was concerned with her online safety. And this is why we created our Safe Circle technology, allowing children to create, publish, and share their content in a secure network without the threat of a potential predator. Only given access to the true community of family, friends, and educators. We make money by selling an annual subscription directly to parents, also through corporate partners who sponsor schools and school districts to have access to the Healthy Hip Hop platform. There are over 30 million parents nationwide of kids ages 12 and under, and also 2 million elementary teachers, making our total addressable market $1.2 billion annually. Our team is led by experts in the music industry, corporate and educational sales, software engineering, but most importantly is our love, passion, and commitment for what we do. In 2020, we joined Project Music. In a short amount of time, we've grown to over 5,000 active users, secured multiple paid pilots, and brought on three corporate partners who believe in our mission vision, and values. We're currently raising a $1 million C round and have 600K of that committed. These funds will be utilized to make key hires, develop next iterations of our technology, and turn up our sales and marketing efforts. And Healthy Hip Hop was just selected by the Google for Startups Black Founders Fund for a $100,000 non-dilutive investment. In 2020, the hip hop music genre surpassed all of the genres for the number one spot in the world in the generating billions of dollars in revenue. Healthy hip hop will be the trailblazers in the children's hip hop market. Join us as we transform a generation through music, mindfulness, and motivation. Tell a teacher, tell a parent to download the app and become a part of the movement today. Healthy hip hop is for the children, for the culture. Thank you. 
Well done, Roy. Always killing it. Um, to keep the fun moving, we're going to go to introduce Emily and Itty Ditty is Kelly Turner of CSAC. At CSAC, we support tens of thousands of individuals who are bringing millions of songs to life. With collaboration being at the heart of our organization, we are thrilled to partner with Project Music for the fourth year. CSAC and the founders you are hearing from tonight will continue to push creativity and innovation so that those songwriters can continue to create and to share. Our next presenter is focused on making sure that artists have a path to connect with all-star producers. Please welcome Emily Satterley of Itty Ditty. I am a singer-songwriter. I'm a singer-songwriter. And I'm a singer-songwriter. I recorded the song. I recorded a demo, and I received back several different submissions from different producers. I had six producers come back. Each producer took their own spin on my song. In the past, I tried working with friends, but it didn't result in something that sounded like the sound I was looking for. Everything is turning digital. helps to find artists that are very serious. Uh, I've also had great experiences with Itty Ditty through just getting clients. I've, I've been able to make a little bit of money with it, taking these artists' demos and turning them into something that they're really proud of. And I got something I was really proud to release. Now we're doing a whole album together. Hi, my name is Emily. I'm the CEO of Itty Ditty, and we are solving this huge problem that now exists in the DIY landscape where the market is saturated with producers and artists don't know how to navigate this. I would know because I am a singer songwriter, so I've been through it all myself and I'm intimately familiar with these problems. The solution we're offering comes in three tiers. In the first tier, artists get access to our proprietary song development software and then receive feedback from multiple producers on their song. In the second tier, the artists receive specs or mock-ups of their song from a handful of these producers. And in the final tier, the artist gets to work with their favorite producer to complete the song. We are post-revenue, we have users, but we don't just have users, we have die-hard fans. They love the solution we're building because without us, the way most artists are forced to find a producer right now is really just by asking around or hiring a friend. And as shown in the reel, this is causing a lot of problems. Now, there are some platforms where an artist could find a producer, but most of them aren't music focused. The biggest competitor would be Sound Better, but we see them as hardly different from Craigslist in that they're simply a directory. None of these platforms provide a workflow that supports the song creation process, and no one has created a solution like Itty Ditty that allows artists to vet producers in a sea of amateurs and that allows talented producers to stand out. For projections, we've drawn comparisons to 99designs, a successful platform that has used a spec work model to disrupt the graphic design industry. But we really see ourselves as a blue ocean, meaning we are expanding the existing market. These problems artists are facing are not fluff. It is not the exception to the rule that artists have these kind of nightmare experiences. But by making production easy and assured, more artists will enter the market. In fact, we've had many artists tell us that they had given up on hiring a producer or that they didn't know where to get started with production until they found us. Getting to market will really be about engaging community through continued guerrilla initiatives and then monetizing this community early on in the user's journey through lower cost services, leading to higher conversion rates later on through these higher full production packages. 
As a team, we have cut everything super thin. I am not just the CEO, I'm also the developer. I have built this platform myself and it is ready to scale to 10,000 users. We will raise a seed when we get to 5,000 users and we think we can get there in 12 to 18 months. It really just depends on how soon we secure funding to help with onboarding and operations. Please reach out to me directly if you see the huge value we're bringing to create a solution to this massive problem for artists and producers. Thank you so much. Well done, Emily. Love that intro video. Love the look. You are killing it. Um, so now it's my pleasure to bring up to the stage someone that needs no introduction in the Project Music family. Um, one of the individuals that brought it to life. And welcome to the stage, Heather McBee. Hello, Heather. Hello, Jeremy. I'm sure you're going to tell me if you can't hear or see me tonight. So I'm I can I can see and hear you. You look awesome. <laughs> I'm going to let you take the stage and uh, I'll be back for the announcement. Awesome. Well, thank you guys. So glad everyone is here tonight and that you've been able to join us in this new new platform and technology. Uh, we've seen three great pitches so far and there's more to come. And since it's five o'clock out there somewhere, let's take a moment to celebrate and honor these music minded entrepreneurs that are pitching tonight. I know we can't see you, but it's the spirit that counts. So whatever you're drinking, Grab your cup, even if it's coffee, raise it high, and let's toast these entrepreneurs. Congratulations, you guys. And for those pitches coming up, congrats in advance to you, too. Um, in Jane's kickoff, she talked about how important our partners are to this program. And I want to highlight some more of our partners, those advisors and industry experts that volunteer their time to help you guys and these entrepreneurs succeed. We have over 60 advisors specializing just in music that work alongside all the other advisors here at the Entrepreneur Center. And out of that, I'd like to do a few specific shout outs to some folks that are on with us tonight. These advisors have been part of the EC and Project Music family since the beginning and helped us launch the program. And hopefully I don't miss anyone if I do please forgive me. Um, but first up, Tony Grotticelli. Thank you so much. He's been with us um, at, from Universal Music. Beth Hall, always a great voice for this program. Brian Rawlings, John Romero, Phil Schmerling, Damon Whiteside, Sean Yeager, and Paul Zamek. Thank you guys. It's um, from back in the days of Chick-fil-A. You were there for us and we continue to appreciate your work. Um, and it may be a little odd to say it this way, but all of you advisors and industry experts, we love you for your passion and commitment to the innovation and helping entrepreneurs' dreams come true. We're grateful for you and your investment. So as everybody probably knows, and I believe Jane said it too, Project Music is six years strong um, and COVID hasn't even got us down thanks to the virtual world. Um, we've been able to continue to help those music minded entrepreneurs. And we're really excited to share some big news about the 2021 program. Project Music is going to be expanding to include all sectors of the entertainment space. This is something we've been thinking about and working with um, folks in the music industry, but also talking to folks in sports, gaming, film to understand their needs. And what we learned is that by prioritizing entrepreneurial companies that can cross into multiple sectors of entertainment, we can really help these industries more. And there's a lot of cross opportunity there. So imagine working with a vetted virtual reality platform that works with live concerts, sporting teams, and other live events. And so much has changed in all of the industries that we're finding there's a lot of cross opportunity and cross pollination, a lot of the same challenges faced across the sectors. Um, in addition to music, we'll be working with, as I said, sports, film, TV, e-gaming, and publishing. Um, and many of you here have actually worked with some Project Music alumni and have already experienced what this can look like. I buy TV, Video Bomb, and SCI. They're all in the music space. They're all in um, TV and video, film. They've been able to do that over the years, and it's been fun to work with them and see how they've been able to reach into other sectors. Um, 
So there's another piece to that. We'll be adding Doug DeAngelis, who you saw just present Black Sleeve. He's also part of an amazing organization called A3E, and we'll be working with him and that group to add an entertainment research innovation experience and mini conference series to add value to you guys, as well as the participants in the program. So more exciting stuff to come there. And we'll be opening applications for the new Project Music and Entertainment this December. More details are coming your way soon. And jumping ahead a bit, Jeremy, this isn't taking quite as long as you probably wanted me to, but wanted to let everyone know our partners at First Horizon couldn't be here tonight, but our friend Andrew Kintz of the Private Client Services and Music and Entertainment Industry Divisions asked us to share his congratulations with the 2020 cohort and a big welcome to all of you watching tonight. So Jeremy, I know you're out there somewhere. Are you ready for me to introduce the next presenter? Let's do it. Awesome, so next up, uh, our presenter has created an innovative new way for young students to learn about the crucial subject of math, but you may be surprised how it's done. It's my pleasure to introduce Marcus Blackwell of Make Music Count. Let's try that one more time. Love you, Marcus. What if awesome songs made math fun? Turns out most of us experience some level of math anxiety. And when compared to other countries around the world, we are not in competition. Hi, my name is Marcus Blackwell, CEO and founder of Make Music Count, a math curriculum and app taught by learning how to play your favorite songs on the piano. And I used to be one of those kids afraid of math. My fear of math ended after I attended Morales College and realized that my passion of playing the piano also included understanding math. This led to a mathematics degree, becoming an engineer in corporate America, and teaching the main music curriculum to third to 12th grade students for six years. I learned that all students want to learn, but you have to meet them where they are. And that's what Make Music Count does. We have made math culturally relevant. Let's learn more with an example. We get started by selecting a math subject. Today's lesson will focus on fractions. But it'll be more fun because it'll be taught by learning how to play the song Do It by Hallie and Chloe. Let's get started. Your question says F plus one. You're going to look at the piano like a number line and count in half intervals from one key to another. F to F sharp is a half and F sharp to G is another half. F plus one is G. When you finish the answers to your questions, you're solving for the notes to play the song on the piano. And your end result is that you'll be able to hear the music when the keys light up, you play along as well. Here we go. One, two, that is how you make that cool. The coronavirus has changed how we think about education um, for the near future. Now, we've seen an increase in demand from parents who need educational resources to engage the kids at home, but also now that schools are operating with socially distanced digital learning, they need creative resources like Make Music Count to increase engagement and retention so that you can be using this in math class and music class. Let's take a look at our market. There are 300 million students that are currently homeschooled globally. And because of the coronavirus, there were over 1 billion students who are at home and 60 million teachers that were not in the classroom. Here's how we're going to reach our target market. 
For reaching parents, we're going to be using social media marketing and marketing through the Apple and Google Play Store. For landing more school district partnerships, we'll be partnering with platforms like Clever um, and working with Google for Education. Here's how we make money. For our app in the App Store, it's a freemium subscription model at $5.99 a month or $49.99 for the year. And we also license to school districts at $7 a student for the year. Currently, there are just shy of 3,000 people who are using the app on their phone. And we have 250 schools, which equals about 50,000 students registered through our school district plan. We are very creative with how we need to reach students. Uh, for example, with our national partnership with the Boys and Girls Club. We also collaborate with Cartoon Network where we featured one of their new movies in our app. And we've also worked with the NBA Players Association where we can attach ourselves with their um, desired need for working with educational reform. And we'd like to work with you. If you are a record label, we'd like to collaborate so that you can have a creative way to market your new artist music while we show how their music helps improve math performance. Not only is our curriculum cool, it is working. We see an average of 20% increase in math test scores. This has been excellent with special needs students. And it's decreasing behavior problems and just generally creating a positive math learning environment. This is my team. All of us are interested in using creativity to educate kids so that they can reach their full educational potential. The way to reach kids is by making lessons that are culturally relevant. Students will perform better when they can see themselves in the lessons. And we'd like to work with you. Again, if you are a record label or in the music industry, let's talk about how we can collaborate, where we can use our platform to market your artists, new music, and if we can find ways that our platform can increase streams on your music streaming platform. Thank you. Well done, Marcus. Up next to introduce MellowQuest is one of the founding partners of Project Music. It's Sarah Trahern, the CEO of CMA. CMA is proud to partner with the EC for Project Music. Today, we join in celebrating this year's cohort and the 50 plus companies that have graduated Project Music. At the CMA Foundation, we fund and support music education efforts throughout the country. And the next team shares that passion. I'd like to introduce the next 2020 Project Music team to pitch tonight, MeloQuest and the unique music teaching gaming adventure. My name is Graham Winder. I'm the CEO and founder of MeloQuest. Our newest game, Keys and Kingdoms, is the first ever epic adventure game that makes learning the piano seamless and fun. Music education has been primed for disruption for a very long time. Ineffective teaching methods, high cost, and decreased accessibility lead to 8 out of 10 kids quitting music within the first year. We are proud to introduce Keys and Kingdoms, which features our proprietary method SRM. This method is proven to instantly connect anyone to music learning in a new and powerful way. And best of all, we've baked this method into a fun and exciting adventure game that we can deliver at scale and for a fraction of the cost. Keys and Kingdoms is a SaaS-based subscription service that follows popular ed tech models. We also have the added revenue streams of point of purchase sales through retail and eventually hope to grow into our own royalty streams with our original in-game music. All other learning apps fall into one of two categories. They are either focused on traditional learning or purely entertainment with no real education. Keys and Kingdoms is the first to combine these two worlds into one amazing experience. Our competitive advantage is huge. We start with our SRM method, which reduces dependency on visual information training the player to learn music instantly by ear. Next, our adaptive learning engine closely monitors the success a player is having and constantly adjusts to keep the player challenged but progressing and having fun. 
And finally, as you've already heard, we are the first to place music learning inside of a role-playing game. Once again, my name is Graham Winder, and I am the creator of Keys and Kingdoms and of the SRM method. I have over 20 years of music education experience. Our CTO, Wyeth Ridgeway, is also the president of Leviathan Games. His studio has worked on titles such as Lord of the Rings, Pirates of the Caribbean, and Skylanders, just to name a few. Brian Hodes heads our board and is extremely active in our day-to-day -day operations. He is the former CCO at Activision Blizzard and the key architect of Guitar Hero. So now that the MVP is out, how are we gonna reach our audience? Well, we have three main channels. The first is retail. I am so proud to announce that we have just signed an exclusive deal with Best Buy. Not only are they gonna carry us in stores and on end caps through July of 2021, but they are also putting their marketing muscle behind us to help with early adoption. My passion lies in education, and we wanna do all we can to help. That's why for any music teacher in the US, they can receive a free license to our game. Also, by partnering with the nonprofit Give a Note Foundation, we will be able to offer teachers professional development credit and other resources as well. And finally, our own internal efforts include a base email marketing campaign of about 20,000 emails and a social media strategy that includes influencers with a blast radius of about 50 million followers. We are currently wrapping up a convertible bridge note of $400,000, and we have raised 350000 of that to date. Thank you. Well done, Graham, and congratulations on that partnership. Um, we're really excited. Uh, the other day, Graham sent us a photo of himself with the end cap um, and with the game in person. So cool to see things come to life. Um, so here to introduce our next pitcher um, is Tom Truitt of Who Knew? I've watched Project Music grow from an idea when Heather presented at the very first Who Knew event in 2015 to what it has become today program reaching far beyond Nashville to drive innovation. Music companies continue to operate, and I recently had the honor of moderating a panel with our next presenter and just want to share how impressed I was with their use of science of music to solve human issues. Please welcome Dr. Ed Large of Oxiliscape. I'm Ed Large, neuroscientist at University of Connecticut and founder of Oxiliscape. We're developing a music-based digital intervention for Alzheimer's disease that combines the power of music with the latest breakthroughs in neuroscience. In the U.S. today, nearly 6 million people are suffering from dementia due to Alzheimer's disease. That makes Alzheimer's the most expensive disease in America, with 22% of costs paid out of pocket by patients and families. Family and friends provide another 18.5 billion hours of unpaid care each year. Yet Alzheimer's still kills more people every year than breast cancer and prostate cancer combined. That's because despite billions spent on research, there's still no cure for Alzheimer's disease and not even a neuroprotective treatment. At Oscilloscape, we're taking an innovative new approach. Synchrony Gamma will help people who want to delay the onset of dementia, preserve memory and cognition by stimulating brain rhythms. Patients listen to their favorite music and watch a synchronized light show. Before I explain how it works, I want to show you something amazing. This is Henry, who has severe dementia due to Alzheimer's. He spends his days in a wheelchair, normally mute, and unable to answer simple questions. Hi, Papa. Huh? How you doing? All right. Fine. Who, Wait. Who am I? I don't know. Wait a minute. Uh, I don't know. Okay, it's Jerry. In the documentary Alive Inside, Henry's given headphones to listen to his favorite music, and you can see his reaction here. When the headphones are taken off, Henry's able to engage in conversation. Did you like music? Yes, yes, I learned the big dances and things. What was your favorite music when you were young? Well, I guess, uh, well, Cab Calloway was my number one band guy I liked. Music has the power to stimulate brain rhythms, engage patients, evoke memories, and activate the brain's reward centers. It decreases depression and improves the quality of life. So our first ingredient is music. Our second ingredient is called gamma stimulation, 
A recent study at MIT showed that stimulating these brain rhythms in mice using sound and light restored the brain's normal gamma rhythms, reduced plaques and tangles, and improved memory. But the problem is, humans are not mice, and gamma rhythms sound like this. So we use music, which naturally stimulates gamma rhythms in humans, and add synchronized lights to amplify this effect. Here's how it works. The patient listens to his or her favorite music, and is input to a neural network we developed to simulate the synchronization of brain rhythms to music. We use the neural network music, simulating the visual system at delta, theta, and gamma frequencies. This should increase synchronization throughout the brain, improve memory and cognition, and decrease plaques and tangles. The National Science Foundation is now funding our research to test the effectiveness of this form of brain stimulation in patients. We're currently running a preclinical efficacy trial. We'll follow up with a feasibility study next year and a pivotal trial beginning in 2022. Our business model assumes one-time sales of the device and associated hardware, plus monthly subscription and app platform to monitor patient progress. After FDA approval, we'll begin marketing to residential care communities. The following year, we begin marketing to patients who live at home. We forecast $2.7 billion in total revenue by 2032. We're looking for bridge funding in the form of a convertible note to take us to a Series A that we plan to close in early 2021. We also plan a Series B and will continue to seek federal funding as well. This is the all-star team creating an innovative music-based form of brain stimulation to fight Alzheimer's disease. Thank you. Well done, Ed, Dr. Ed Large. To keep the fun moving right along, here to introduce Osiris Media is our man Justin Levinson at Big Machine Label Group. In leading a group of record labels, a music publishing company, and working with TV, radio, and more, we've found that Project Music is a great place to look for innovative solutions to our challenges. We're glad to partner with the EC to provide resources for the music tech entrepreneurs that are taking the risks to find the answers. The next presenter is a great example. In working with Justin Moore's podcast, we learn firsthand what it takes to get a podcast in front of a consumer. Let's watch RJB present Osiris Media Solution. Hey, I'm RJ, I'm the CEO and co-founder of Osiris. Our mission is to create a deeper connection to the music you love. So we're building the music podcast company. We know that music's all about storytelling and we are storytellers. We build a platform for artists, a community of hundreds of thousands of passionate music fans, and we work with leading brands who want to reach those fans. In 2019, we doubled our revenue and had 2 million downloads of our podcasts. Our goal is to be the place where every artist who has a story to tell thinks of Osiris, and music fans know that we're the place to go for these stories. We now have over 40 podcasts, and we work with leading artists like David Crosby. We tell important stories in music like the history of the New Orleans Jazz Fest, we take deep dives on bands like Fish, and we do innovative interview shows like our new show, Past, Present, Future, Live. And all of our new shows have reached the top of the Apple Podcast music charts. You may know that the podcast revolution is here. More Americans now listen to podcasts than go to church. And 20 million Americans discovered podcasts in 2019. Podcast ad revenue is just getting started and projected to hit $1 billion by 2021. And Spotify alone has spent $800 million on acquisitions in the space in the past two years. The landscape is getting more crowded. There are big companies like Spotify, Apple, and iHeart who are making podcasts and some music podcasts. There are big podcast networks like Earwolf, Gimlet, and Wondery, which are making podcasts and dabbling in music. But nobody's creating what we're building, a completely music-focused podcast studio. So far, we've worked with sponsorship partners who are best in class, like Ben & Jerry's, SiriusXM, and Diageo, and many of them have seen a 100% return or more on their ad spend. We also have a premium subscription model, production services, and we're going to resume our live event series as soon as we can. Our download growth to date has doubled since we started and continues to grow every quarter. And on the revenue side, we're increasing every year. And despite the economic meltdown in 2020, and having to cut costs significantly, we still project to be ahead of 2019. 
So we have a few advantages we want to tell you about. Many artists see us as an important platform for reaching their fans. Here are quotes from both Trey Anastasio of Fish and David Crosby, who we've worked with on shows, and you can see their positive reaction to the stuff we've done with them. We also have a huge library of content that allows people to go back and binge shows they've just discovered from the beginning. Unlike news or current events focused podcasts, our podcasts are all just as relevant now as they were when they were released. We also have a demographic sweet spot for advertisers in terms of age, education, and household income. And our listeners are really investing time and money in what we're doing. We did a crowdfunding campaign last year, which included hundreds of our own listeners. So our roots are in jam band music, and we've already started expanding into other genres. Our next priority is country, which is one of the main reasons we applied to Project Music. We're storytellers, and we know nothing tells a story like a country song, and we want to tell the stories of these artists. We also want to own the content pyramid. We want to make content that appeals to the obsessive fans with cult followings like Fish and the Grateful Dead and lots of others. We want to produce content that reaches engaged fans, curious fans who want to learn more about music, learn more about new music, and do deep dives with fans. And then we want to reach the largest group, the interested fans. So think of podcasts like Dolly Parton's America or Broken Records interviews with people like Bruce Springsteen or Alicia Keys. We're going to make shows that can serve that big, big audience, but also the other ones as well. So we've just closed a $500,000 round of investment uh, with Premier Music Group as one of the lead investors. And our priorities are to create more shows with more artists in country, pop, and hip hop, to expand our relationships in music, to partner with big platforms like Spotify, Apple, and iHeart, and to increase investment in sales, show production, and marketing. Everything we've done so far has been bootstrapped for the most part. Based on our momentum and growth in these investments, we anticipate being able to get to about 1.4 million in revenue per quarter by late 2022. We have amazing advisors from the world of venture capital, music technology, music publishing, and podcasting. And this is our leadership team. Tom Marshall in the middle is the primary lyricist for the band Fish, so he has offered us unparalleled access to the music industry. And our CEO, Kirsten, has an amazing background in music management, operations, and podcasting. We'd love to talk. We're seeking introductions in country and Americana music and strategic partners in music, media, and marketing. Thanks so much for your time. <laughs> Amazing. Here to welcome our next, uh, next team is partner. Uh, well, actually, he's not a partner. This is a gentleman who um, you guys all also probably know very well. One of the people that brought Project Music to life. It's Robbie Goldsmith. I'm glad everyone could join us today. Led by Joe Galante's music industry expertise, uh, I was part of founding Project Music. Our goal was to make Nashville the it city to launch a music tech business. Nashville is uniquely positioned with access to major labels, publishers, booking agencies, artists, songwriters, producers, and more. We knew that if we brought the industry's experts and leaders together with the EC's entrepreneurial education and investor access, Project Music could help drive innovation in the industry. If you'd like to get involved, please contact uh, Jeremy or Heather. Now, I'd like to introduce our next presenter, Brady Hogard of So Neato. Hi, my name is Brady Hogard, and I'm the founder and CEO of So Neato Software. So Neato is a recording studio manager. Hmm? Hi, my name is Brady Hogard, and I'm the founder and CEO of Sonito Software. Sonito is a recording studio management platform that helps recording studios and audio professionals to better manage their studio business using music technology software. So much like the recording console has been the center of a traditional recording studio in managing their projects from start to finish, Sonito is the center of a modern recording studio business in managing business processes from end to end. Studios typically come in one of two flavors. Studio A may have paper processes. It's entirely inefficient and generally without systemization and automation in place, they tend to drop the ball in a lot of ways. Now, Studio B may be more savvy. They cobble together any number of individual applications to build a business workflow. The challenge here is that these are all generic solutions. There's still gaping holes in the studio's processes that these solutions cannot fill. And it becomes cumbersome in managing so many different integrations trying to build this workflow. 
Sonido is the best collection of studio management tools that are all found within one single, more intuitive platform. So if you remember all of these individual applications, these generic solutions, they become entirely unnecessary because Sonido software brings the best of these tools into one single platform. Now that includes different benefits such as lead and contact management, multi-room scheduling, managing studio project details on a daily basis, the review of audio mixes, audio files within a single platform, client communications, and so much more. Today, Sonido serves several different market segments. We cater to commercial studios, project studios, freelance engineers and producers, as well as educational music institutions. Our five-year goal is to become the standard business management solution in the audio production space. And to accomplish that goal, we're taking two routes. One is through education. We are currently partnering with educational music institutions or universities with recording arts programs, providing free licenses to their students to get their hands on Sonido, learn how to use these business tools while in their educational experience for a future opportunity to land these students as customers. We're also selling our services to studios with uh, over 112,000 opportunities globally and a SaaS subscription model at $99 per month. Our total addressable market is over $133 million annually. And we're seeing traction today. Sonido software was launched in November of 2019. The number of our users is growing month over month and we recently won our first 40 user enterprise contract back in July. Today, this week, in fact, we are at the signing table with Spotify to power their podcasting studio in LA and eventually globally. And on top of that, we're in conversations with Sony Music to help power their individual studios within the Sony Music Network. Today, we're seeking partnership opportunities through digital audio workstation, distribution partners, industry influencers, individuals that can help us generate more awareness of Sonido and the power of these tools in the hands of studio businesses. We're also seeking investment opportunities through angel investors or other partners of up to $250,000 to help build our sales structure and continue to push Sonido through the industry and meet our goals. Sonido is recording studio management software made simple. We appreciate your time. We look forward to answering any questions that you have and networking with you throughout the course of this event. Thank you very much. Well done, Brady. Second to last pitch. And yeah, here to introduce the next, uh, the next team is Pinnacle Bank. Hey, everyone. I'm David Duvall, Senior Vice President of Pinnacle Bank's Music and Entertainment Division. At Pinnacle, we're driven by dreams of what could be and not just what is. That's why we've been proud partners with the EC's project since the We've seen firsthand how entrepreneurs can help tackle the industry's challenges and help the business grow. The next presenter does just that. He helps an artist's business. Please welcome Peter Karpis with Starsona. Hi, I'm Peter Karpus. I was Intuit's Chief Marketing and Product Management Officer. I also ran the Quicken business. After I left Intuit, I went to PayPal, where I had similar jobs, including running PayPal's largest P&L. My co-founder, Matt Martin, was employee number 119 at his company and left when they were at over 14,000. And we're excited to tell you about our latest venture, Starsona. Now, Starsona is about connecting with fans, creating joy, and making money. Look, we are witnessing a true rarity right now, which is the creation of an entirely new product category. And that product category is personalized interactions and direct connections with fans. Adoption is astonishing. Now, if you want to talk about direct connections, come find me later. But today we're going to talk about personalized interactions, of which the most famous company is Cameo. Cameo did less than a million dollars in sales two years ago, and they're going to break a hundred million this year unbelievable growth for the whole category. But something is missing in the category because in every other market, there are two concepts. There are marketplaces and their own stores. So for example, in the physical world, Walmart is the marketplace, but then there are the own stores like Lululemon or the Nike store or the Michael Kors store. Online, it's eBay as the marketplace, but everybody still has their own Shopify stores. Now, what's missing? 
Well, in Cameo, Cameo is the marketplace in this category. But where's the own store? Or more importantly, the technology that enables artists to have their own store for offering personalized interactions. Starsona is the own store. We enable an artist to offer any kind of personalized interaction they want. For example, video shout outs. They can also offer chats, direct messaging with their fans, or get paid to interact on social media, or offer fun stuff like recording a personalized voicemail message, or any kind of personalized merch or one of a kind items that they want to offer. Starsona enables them to offer it. Now there are three major advantages to having your own store. We call them the three F's. First is flexibility. You can offer anything you want and you can make it little page look like you want. The second is fan data. Super important. We give you the email and contact information for your own marketing and audience building. Marketplaces, they don't do that. They say it's our customer, not your fan. The third F is fees. We charge less because marketplaces charge more because they're driving foot traffic. Now, that is the trade-off. Marketplaces drive foot traffic. If you're of your own store, you have to drive foot traffic to your store. But here's the amazing thing. Artists don't need somebody else to drive foot traffic. They have social media. They have the best access to their likeliest customers of anybody. Now, we've already made great progress. We're trusted by over 1,600 people, including where we started, which was in sports, some really big sports stars like Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, and Steve Young, and T.O. Then we moved into social media, and so we got people like Perez Hilton or Ms. Juicy Baby, large stars and medium stars, and even hopefuls as well. More importantly, they're making money on the platform. We have a bunch of people who are well on their way to making five digits, and even some who are on their way to making six. Now, we are seeking three things. Connection with artists, because now we're moving into music. Partnership opportunities, whether it's record companies or marketing companies or labels. And then finally, I'm always happy to talk to potential investors. So if you're interested in investing in this category, feel free to come find me. Persona, connect with fans, create joy, make money. Thank you. Love it, Peter. I was just putting in the chat, uh, love Miss Juicy Baby. She's just, I need to use uh, Starsona to get her to record my voicemail or something cool like that. Okay, we're on the last pitch. Um, everyone's done such a fantastic job and, and what a way to bring us home than with Sarah Beth Perry uh, with the band right here based in Nashville. I'm in here to welcome her is Doug Howard. I'm Doug Howard, Dean of the Curb College at Belmont University. We've been part of Project Music since the very beginning, not only as a partner, but our students have been involved too, as product testers, pitch watchers, and interns. Our proudest moments have been seeing our students' entrepreneurial spirit shine when they have the opportunity to participate in the program. I'm excited to introduce one of those Belmont grads, Sarah Beth Perry, as she pitches her company with the band. Hi, my name is Sarah Beth Perry, and I'm the founder and CEO with the band. <laughs> The music industry runs on the demands of music fans, but artists have less access to their fan bases than you would think. Most social media companies provide general analytics about their fans. However, artists need more individualized fan data in order to nurture their super fans to increase their revenue. And COVID has eliminated the option of live events. So we created an ideal solution that helps artists connect virtually as well as help them once live events return. And artists are losing revenue by not fully engaging with their fans right now. Artist careers are dependent on their fans, so why is there not a platform that allows artists to virtually manage their fan bases? WinFan provides a turnkey solution for artists to manage and monetize their fan bases through fan crews, our modern day version of a fan club. This is an example of the Naked and Famous' fan crew, and through fan crews, artists can interact with their fans via posts, private messaging, virtual meet and greets, live streams, and more. And each artist gets to fully customize their fan crew. So they can change the colors, the header images, the membership tiers, the benefits that they offer, and the price that fans actually pay to join. In addition, artists will have access to an analytic dashboard where they can see detailed information about their fan base, including total number of members, net revenue, where your fans reside, and a list of your fans' contact information. And this is all at a zero startup cost to the artist. 
A study by Nielsen showed that super fans would be willing to spend up to $2.6 billion more per year if they could gain access to exclusive content from their favorite artist. There are other membership tools out there like Patreon and Memberful, but they are used by smaller indie artists. The most modern membership tool available for these medium to large major label artists is a simple forum website. And these are the artists that we are planning to target. K-pop is one of the highest revenue generating genres, and they have similar fan club apps like with the band. But the platform is all in Korean, and it was created only for K-pop bands. One of these bands, BTS, has over 5 million fan club members paying a minimum of $30. That means that they are making over $150 million per year on one fan club. North America really needs to implement these fan engagement strategies so we can capitalize on the massive fandom market that is made up of millions of fans. Our two main revenue streams come from fan crews and fan activations. With fan crews, there is no upfront fee to the artist, but when a fan purchases a fan crew membership, 70% goes to the artist and 30% to with the band. And all transaction fees are covered by with the band. Another part of our business is fan activations. Fan activations are one-off campaigns we do to help artists promote their music through community. And each campaign we create is fully customized to enhance the artist and their brand. We've previously created several successful fan activations for artists like the Jonas Brothers and for Casey Musgraves. And for fan activations, the artists pay based on the size of the activation, the physical cost, and the location of the activation. Our team has incredible experience working with companies like CMA, Green Room PR, and NASA, and they've all been incredible to work with. With the band will be profitable during our first year, we will break even on a monthly basis once 6,386 fans subscribe to a $4.99 monthly fan group membership. And we expect this to happen within six months of launching our first fan club. And right now, we would love to ask for your help in these two main areas. We would love introductions to artist managers and heads of digital app labels. We are also looking for advisors in music and marketing. With the band is creating an inclusive community where both fans and artists feel a part of something bigger than themselves. We are eliminating boundaries, so now you can go behind the scenes with the band. You guys did it. Great job, everyone, once again. I'm just one man clapping, but representing all of the the supporters, the advisors, the, the partners, and um, just the entire Project Music community um, is, is giving you a raucous round of applause. Um, great job, teams. I know it was a lot of work to put everything together, but you did it. Um, and now comes the fun part. Really quickly, before we um, move to the next portion of the event, uh, I want to talk a little bit about a new program that the Entrepreneur Center is putting out. And we are we received uh, grant funding from Metro to support the entrepreneurial community as it relates to the impact of COVID-19. And so I just want to show you guys a quick little video about this program um, that is free for entrepreneurs um, that are based in Nashville and it connects you to all sorts of resources if you've been impacted um, by the pandemic. So we'll show this quick video and uh, we'll, we'll get right into the next portion. My name is Jane Allen, and I am the CEO of the Nashville Entrepreneur Center, a 10 year old nonprofit organization that is here in Nashville to support all entrepreneurs in our community. And during a new program called New Nashville, we provide resources to all Davidson County entrepreneurs and small businesses negatively impacted by COVID. So, what do you get? First, each week, there are free office hours with attorneys, accountants, bankers, marketing experts, and others. Second, free programs that address questions asked by you. For example, how do you transform your website to an e-commerce platform? Third, access to speakers who will discuss how they have survived and are surviving crisis and be open to answer your questions. Fourth, we have services available to help you. For example, a video like this, you can create a professional video to connect with potential customers and investors that you can then place directly onto your website. We all know it's more important than ever to be able to provide clients and potential customers the reasons that they should be doing business with you. Hopefully, this can allow you to be able to do so. 
please sign up today at ec.co forward slash Renew Nashville. And I hope to see you soon. Yep, so all you got to do is head to ec.co and um, there'll be plenty of, plenty of information on that program. Once again, it is free um, and, and it doesn't have to be a music or entertainment business, but um, any business that you know of um, or if you have one that's been impacted by COVID-19, please check that out. All right, on to the fun part. So for until 6 p.m., which is about 45 minutes, um, you will head to the startup village. So there on the left hand side, you'll be able to click. It says now and you'll see a box for each team and you will head right there. You'll be able to go in and connect whether it is uh, you're seeking a connection for yourself. If you have a potential um, person that you'd like to plug them into, um, that's where it will happen. The uh, the last thing I'll say is see uh, one team in there that did not pitch tonight um, just for extenuating circumstances. Um, but he is a stellar founder and has product, and we stand behind him at Project Music. It's SCI Mask. I um, mean, doing a lot of cool things in the live event security space. So please, um, you'll also see SCI Mask uh, in the the founder Stuart Bostock in the village. Thank you guys so much for um, coming to the showcase portion. So now head to the startup village, uh, make your connections, and. I'll be following up with the video and with more information on Project Music, but until, until next time, thank you so much for being here. See you guys, but see you in the Startup Village. I'm gonna kind of just sit here for a second.